Like it, a lot of mythology behind the Transformers toys and the brand. It's not like a lot of other properties that they turn into movies. You know, it wasn't a comic book originally, it was a toy, but subsequently there was a lot of stories that were told about those robots. One of the things we wanted to do in this film was open the floodgates a little bit and tell the audience that there is an entire universe out there, not only of Transformer characters, but of Transformer history. And there are chapters within books of the story of the Civil War on Cybertron and the story of where Transformers came from and how they were created. And there are all sorts of stories within this universe which we could explore. And the trick is really to make that mythology work while maintaining the human story of the characters we've come to know and love on Earth. The first movie was so much about this innocent kid wanting to get the girl and wanting the car to get the girl and then finding himself inadvertently the center of an alien war and rising to that challenge. And it felt to us like all good sequels put their main character in some very, very difficult predicament where they have to choose between being a hero and being normal. And we gravitated toward that basic idea for Sam. So that was the first thing we focused on is what kind of rite of passage can we find that again has a universality to it, even if you didn't go for, through the specific one. And the one we chose was that sort of process of becoming a young adult. And that sense, sort of the notion of responsibility. The next thing that came to mind was leaving home and going to college. And we thought it would be interesting to see him on his own. Who is he outside of these relationships? How does he see himself and who does he want to be? In the meantime, the strike was you know, coming down upon us and, and we were sort of left with basically a very rough outline of what those guys had talked about. And it was Michael Bay sitting there in a room by himself saying, well, we can do this. We can, you know, while those guys are out, we're gonna figure this out because we've got to prep this movie. I kept dreaming why they were on strike. And granted, we had a, I think, 13-page outline. Um, and that was enough to start prepping. The first couple of months we spent really uh, focusing on designing about 70 robots. We have a team of guys and we sit there and I start spitting out ideas of different types of robots. Michael would come in one day and be like, what about this guy? Or we would do this guy and same time meeting with GM, seeing what new vehicles they had come out, stuff that they were really itching to put into the movie. Certain vehicles, you know, Michael would either say yay, nay, or on it, and uh, we'd go from there. General Motors cars, uh, they've been uh, very gracious in offering the filmmakers all a range of cars and giving Michael some unprecedented access. Uh, the kinds of things that uh, we've been able to do with the Camaro in the first movie, I mean, I think we're iconic. The kinds of things you're going to see, whether it's the Volt or some of the other new cars, the uh, new Corvette, you know, are just really incredible. The designs are incredible, the cars are incredible, and the characters they become are also incredible because we apply, you know, kind of Hasbro Transformer magic to it, and they become these great characters. My process is usually starts very sketchy. Um, I do a really, really rough silhouette because uh, I think at the end of the day with character design, the key thing is to get a silhouette that sort of has the right personality because you know that's sort of the quickest read that you have on an object or on a character is sort of how big are the shoulders, how strong do the arms look, how wide is the chest, you know, does it look like it's athletic, does it look like it's slow, does it look like it's armored, does it look like it's a really quick little scout type creature or character. So you can start to feel that out very quickly with a silhouette. After a, a, a loose sketch is done, I would then work that into a more full-blown illustration, which means adding you know, more realistic lighting in the way that it's painted, taking photography of the car or the pieces of the real thing that it needs to turn into, and applying those from photo scrap over the sort of rough design in Photoshop, and then ultimately applying the level of, of polish to what, what is just illustrated that makes it tie in with the photography. So it's sort of a collage process between a rough you know, intention of, of the massing of the, of the robot and then adding in real parts and then shining it all up to where it looks like a decent, you know, not photorealistic, but a, you know, a squint photoreal impression of what the robot's really going to look like. And at that point, you present a first version and then, and then the changes come. Let me explain something. Yeah. When John Simmons is under the, he says, I'm under the robot scrotum. Yeah. 
I want to do a shot where he looks up when he's trying to know where we are, and I want to. What are those?